as you can see I'm back at my perch here in Masaya Lago I, uh, I have some thoughts that I want to share with you about uh, my life here in Ecuador and my experience back in the state I made some notes and I'm going to uh, start right after this hey Oh, rock a cheek. Right, uh, hello there. First thing I put on my list here is, am I happy? Question mark, to be back. <laughs> you know, that's, everybody asks me that. You know, well, you glad you're back? You know, well, yeah, I'm glad I'm back. And the reason why is because I have a lot of great friends here. You know, my girlfriend is here. And I, I can come up with a lot of reasons why I'm glad to be back in Monta, you know. One is, you know, the, I can't forget the cost of living. You just cannot let it slip by. I was in the States for two and a half months, almost three months. I went January 17th and came back last weekend. And I tell you, the, the, the most shocking thing to me about being in the States, it had nothing to do with the craziness of the people, the craziness of the politicians and the politics in general. The most disturbing aspect of being back in the States was the fact that they couldn't hardly afford to eat there. It's ridiculous. I remember, I, I remember, I, I remember going to the grocery store at Albertsons there in Mesa and couldn't find anything for less than five dollars you know I can remember years ago but well not years ago but when I was you know there three years ago I'd go in there and you could get so many things would be two or three dollars you know now it all starts at five dollars and goes exponentially up you know like crazy I, I just I couldn't believe my eyes you know and not to mention eating out. The day that I arrived, my friends picked me up at the airport and we went straight to the barbecue place. And Juan, my friend, paid for the three of us our dinner and I saw his tap, when I saw it rung up on the register, it was $90 and some change. I, that was just unbelievable to me. I know Three years ago, that same meal would have been 60 bucks for all three of us, and that includes the one beer that I had. So, I, I, I miss, there's a lot that I loved about being in Mesa that I, that I don't get to enjoy here, and, but you know, even after three years, it finally took me to realize that I live in the frickin' city, because you know, I complain about noise. There was no noise in Mesa, Arizona. Actually, the only noise I really experienced there, I think I had a ghost in my place where I was staying. I know a lot of you probably don't believe in that, but I'll tell you what, I think there was a ghost in my place and he bothered the crap out of me. I had to finally wake up one night and address the bastard and tell him if he didn't get out and leave me alone, I was gonna report him to God. And that's the last I experienced him until a few days before I left. But I know it's probably all up here, but I swear to God, one night I heard this on my ceiling. I was sleeping in bed and I heard this and I woke up and then something touched my feet. I thought something fell from the ceiling and landed on my bed, but no, nothing. And that was just this ghost pestering me. I can tell you a whole story about a ghost that was in my place that I owned there that I moved away from in 2021. Okay, so that's enough on that. Just, you know, you can believe that if you want to. If you don't want to believe it, bite me, okay? I, don't, I believe what I freaking want to believe. Uh, boy, that'll probably come back to bite me in the ass. Uh, okay, so anyway. Uh... But the other thing was it's so incredibly quiet there. I'd sat on a back porch. Here's the scene from, from what I got to enjoy 
in the evening. So I was on a golf course, and you know, this is what I got to experience while I was there. And just all I could hear are the birds singing, you know, and watch the sun go down and just watch the golfers go by and, and the wannabe golfers pretending to play golf, you know. Uh, but anyway, and of course I come back here and it's the same old shit. Horns honking, car alarms going off, people yelling in the street, dogs barking. Thank you, there you go. Freaking horn right there. Do it again. I'm, I'm sure... Oh, no, I won't do that. Okay. And, you know, it's a typical Monta. It's a city. I live in the city. So, I mean, it's worse in New York City, I'm sure. But, anyway, so, am I happy to be back? Yeah, can't you tell? I mean, look at this face. And tell me I'm not happy. I, I, I have to be really careful about what I say. I'm very concerned about the state of the emergency and the condition and the way things are going here, this business with Mexico. You know, people ask me what I think about that, and I tell them I don't give a shit about it. I really don't. Six months from now, it'll all be forgotten. You know, what the hell is Mexico going to do to Ecuador? And, and what do we need from them and what do they need from us? I'm telling you, this will blow over. Just like this, state of emergency will blow over. And this country will continue to be the country that it is and has been for years to come. So, am I happy? In a lot of ways I am. In a lot of ways I'm sad, you know, that I had to come back here. But I think what I'm sad about is the fact that I can't afford to live in the United States. And I have a fairly modest income. And I, I could, you know... If, if we were back to 2020 and 2021 prices, I'd, I would probably be back in the United States and have a new mortgage, you know, and living in my own place. But as it is now, it just can't happen. You know, it, um, my way of thinking, if it costs more than half of my income for housing, then it's not worth it. I can't be there. And that's just the, the way it is. And I'm sick of seeing these ads on, on Instagram from these bullshit advertisers saying, seniors can rent houses in Mesa for $450 a month. My ass. Okay? My ass, you can rent a house for $450 a month in Mesa. You can't rent a freaking room for $450 a month. Anyway... <laughs> So that the, the main thing is the cost. It's just the cost. It's still cheap. Even with the 15% uh, IBA tax here, it's still affordable to live here. I kept my receipt from breakfast this morning, Dulce and Cremoso. My bill, my total bill was $7.19. The 94 cents of that was the tax, IBA tax. But that's it, you know, $7.19. Every breakfast that I had at the Wildberry Diner, or at Birdie's in Mesa, cost me at least a $20 bill. Every breakfast I had. So, the states really need to get up. You know, before I left, I heard that McDonald's is now paying $20 an hour. You know, and so people just keep going and keep spending their money there. You know, all these restaurants that have had all these outrageous prices in them were packed. You know, and here we are here in Monta, where it's a third of the cost of living as it is in the United States. And you, these restaurants can't get customers because people are now afraid to go anywhere. I said in my little update yesterday, I said, don't be afraid to come down here. I don't really see any difference, you know. I know there's been some shootings, you know, and, but it's, it's not any different than it was before the state of emergency, to tell you the truth. It's a little quieter, but... Don't, you know, don't put off your, your visit, you know, come on down. I mean, and all, there's so much real estate being developed right now. I'm telling you, you're going to find some deals here. So don't stop. Just go ahead and plan, 
plan on coming down. One of the things that I got to deal with here, and I've, I've talked about this briefly before, was that the corruption within the transit system here and the clone license plates. And as many of you know, I'm a victim of clone license plates. Somebody cloned my license plate and put them on a car similar to mine, and they're driving around Quink, I mean, uh, Quito, no, damn it, Waikil and Duran. And they're going through speed zones and getting tickets. And of course, those tickets are all coming to me. I got a little upset with my attorney because I told him I didn't think anything was being done. I had a visit with him yesterday, and I'm not going to mention his name because I really want to promote this guy. And I want to promote him, and I want to, to, to you know, I want to, I want to really love this guy, you know. And but you know, he, he's proven to me, you know, how typical it is getting shit done in Ecuador. It's just so hard to get anything done here, you know. It's been over three months since we put in the original order to get my registration changed and get it out of my name so that I'm no longer associated with that old number that's still on my car. And, of course, you know, they're still showing that O for fines, fines for tickets that we beat, but yet they haven't been removed from the system. It's a simple keystroke, but no, nobody's doing it. Nobody's doing shit. So anyway, he showed me a piece of paper that I can take and put in my car in case I get stopped by a cop. And I can show to him, the cop, that the order has been placed with the prosecutor's office to have my plates removed and have them changed and all this kind of stuff and show that I'm not responsible for those tickets. And the first thing I noticed when I got home was that the description of the car was completely wrong. It's not even my car. It's not even the same color as my car, and it's not the same plate. So somebody in my lawyer's office screwed up and got a major typo in the very first paragraph, and they're going to fix it. He told me they're talking about it, and I'm, I'm, I'm trusting that he's going to get it taken care of. But that's the kind of crap you got to deal with in this country. And so, you know, and, but you know what, folks? These are obstacles, obstacles that you can get over. You know, you just got to work through them. It's like somebody told me, when I was going through this nightmare of getting back from the States last week, the delayed flights and the missed flights and me having to spend two nights in Miami because of bad weather, you know, somebody told me, go with the flow and let it work its way out, you know? So that's the attitude you gotta take here. Go with the flow and let it work its way out. That's the way I do with driving, you know? I get, I get my little bubble and I sit in it and I just go. You know, and as long as you're not in any hurry and trying to beat somebody, you have no troubles, okay? So anyway, yeah, I'm okay to be back. I miss my friends. I've had breakfast with several people now, and, you know, it's good to be back. But I, one, one thing, I'll tell you one thing that I really, really miss about the States, and then I'll let you go, okay? The choices of food and the conveniences of eating there. Because you go to the grocery store in the States, and there's an aisle that's a mile long of a frozen container, a frozen food container of a plethora of prepared meals that you can buy and you take home and throw them in the oven or in the microwave and you got a nice meal. They don't have that here. They're not going to have that here in Ecuador. Maybe in Quito, but not here on the coast. So anyway, that's just, that's just one thing. Uh, let's see here. The gas here went up six cents, so it's two forty-six a gallon now. But food is still incredibly cheap. Rents are incredibly cheap. Uh, I'm, people are dropping their prices on their their housing that they're trying to sell here. I encourage you go look at the Montemontebi property uh, sales and rentals Facebook page. Join it. Join the Montemontebi expats and amigos. Facebook page. I'll put them, link them in the description. And look at, look at how things are changing here. And believe it or not, I, I think, relatively speaking, it's, it's still, it's safe here. Okay? So, that's just my take. That's it for this one. If you like this channel, please subscribe. If you like this video, smash that thumbs up button. If you didn't like it, bite my ass. Okay? And I say that with peace and love. I'll see you on the next one. Ciao, ciao.